Hello everyone, my name is Rafal and I would like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. So today, of course, we will be continuing our journey with showcasing you different types of backdrop for your headshot photography. And today we are at the concept number four and I wanna share with you guys an idea which I already talked about a couple years ago and I've received a lot of positive response about it and I wanna talk about creating backdrop with LCD projector. And some of you guys probably have heard about it before, but there's a lot of issues and I've noticed that a lot of, lot of you guys had a lot of problems to make this work. So today, I just wanna dive a little bit deeper and give you a little bit more information how to make this work and what exactly you need and how to kind of manage this whole thing to get best results. So let's dive into it step by step and let's talk about it in specific detail. So I wanna start talking about the projector itself. So I'm using very, very old projector, which is called Hitachi. And believe it or not, this projector is about 10 years old and I never changed light bulb in it. So also this projector also is kind of worn out already, but it still worked perfectly. And this projector has based on the specs 1600 lumens, which is not a lot because with today technology, every basic model has around 2000 lumens and a little bit of better ones you're looking about 3000 lumens so you really don't need some high-end lcd projector this is extremely important because a lot of people from my audience they they purchase some extremely expensive ones and they still were not able to get the results but there's few things which you guys have to understand to to somehow put this together to, to, to make this work. So the lumens are important, but not as much. So one of the biggest challenges what people had is like how they can balance the light from your strobes or your speed lights with the projector. So this is one of the biggest challenges. And a lot of you guys have very extremely powerful strobes, which basically kills everything. So what you guys have to do in order to make this work we have to somehow find the balance between the lighting from the projector and the lighting from your strobes or your speed lights. So the advantage of shooting with speed lights or some of those strobes which are able to set a power output to very, very low. And that's one of the things what I love to work with speed lights is the fact that I can really push the power uh, to very, very minimum and I can very, very easily match the power from the projector to make this work with the power of the light so there is a balance and I actually can use them together and get the best results. So this is one of the biggest challenges what people face. So that's something what you guys have to figure it out your lights which you guys are using and how you can match it the, those two powers to, to make them somehow work together. So this is one of the first challenges people have to go for this. The second thing is the distance between the backdrop and the projector because you have to somehow create this image on some kind of surface. And one of the things what I wanna recommend that you have to use something which is extremely reflective. So white sheet or some, in my case, I've been using some plastic kind of white board so you can reflect the desired image for the backdrop and in my case everything also depends on the type of projector you have because some of the projectors you can put the projector very close to the reflecting surface and can project the image in my case i have to move my projector about three meters away to get the size and the desired image on the surface so this is another really important i would say aspect you guys have to remember you guys have to figure it out how much space you need because there's some projectors which definitely need some distance and if you're working in a very very tight space it might be a little bit of challenging but again there's always ways to let's say moving the projector higher above the the, the subject or shooting from the angle there's always kind of ways to go around it but you also have to kind of figure this out and if you don't have projector and you, you're planning to buy this is something which also you have to look into it how far the projector has to be from the wall or from the surface the image is projected 
so you can really figure it out if it's gonna work um, or not. So now let's talk about the images which you will be projecting. So this is where it gets really, really interesting and it gets really, really cool because the sky is the limit. You can project own images, you can create own colors, own patterns, you can create some abstract images, you can take photos and project them on the wall and use them as a backdrop. So there's a lot of, lot of interesting things what you can do and I'm not gonna dive in deep into this because as I said, the sky is the limit and there's so many different things, but you have to really test it, what works and what doesn't, what colors you get, what kind of patterns you're getting. So that's where I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to actually try different things, try to work with different types of backdrops and images and, and whatever you guys want to use it to project on the wall, you can test it and see how those images are going to turn out. This is when really fun starts and you can do endless amount of stuff. And that's why I love shooting with LCD projector because that gives you so many different things what you can do with your images that, as I said, it's, it's just unbelievable how far you can push it and it's really, really fun because there's no limits. You're not kind of working with one image. You can really dig into some kind of interesting backdrops or some interesting images and try to project them on the wall and see what kind of results you're gonna be getting. So this is a lot of, lot of uh, fun and I highly recommend it to even try it because you can really create some own style and very interesting and unique look to your headshots. So one of the things also what I would like to mention here is sometimes depends on the projector you have, type of surface you're reflecting the image from, sometimes those images they might get a little bit not as saturated as we want to. So depends on the place we are shooting, the one kind of recommendation I have, try to shoot in the location where you can kill a little bit of the ambient light because ambient light is gonna kill it, your backdrop. So um, try to shoot maybe in the evening or in the time where you can just have a little bit more control over the ambient light. But I've noticed the darker it gets, the more better images you will be able to, to, to get. So if your images are really faded and they don't have proper colors and you can see they're off, uh, try to work with your ambient light and see if you have some kind of spills or maybe you have white walls or there is some windows which might actually just throw some ambient light on your image from the projector. So that's something which you guys have to really look into and pay attention how much control you have and how you can really maintain the, the ambient light and how you can kill it to just get just the pure image from the projector. So that's just, this is another thing which is extremely important. And the next thing what I wanna mention, even those images, let's say the background's gonna be a little bit faded and the colors are not gonna be right. There is still retouching process where you can really bring those colors and those patterns and those tones all together. Um, there's a there's lot of techniques. If you guys definitely want to test it, I highly recommend it to go through my retouching process where I specifically talk about it and how you can manage this. So this is going to be something which takes another step in this entire process to, to make those backdrops look very, very interesting. But again, if you're not going to get the results you want, there's still, I would say, the next step which can take those images to another level. So now I just wanna show you a little bit of photo shoot which I've done and we use different types of backgrounds, we use different types of images, we try to play with different lighting and again, in my case, I don't change lighting for the subject too much. I'm working with the Rembrandt uh, lighting because I found this works really, really well. I'm trying to push a little bit more with the different types of backgrounds, different types of posing, face expression and stuff like that, but the lighting pretty much stays the same and doesn't change uh, much. So that's something which definitely uh, helps me to kind of don't go crazy and, and, and just fight with, with the lighting. My main focus most of the day is to creating those interesting 
backdrops and creating something different. As far as the settings for the camera and lighting goes, I would highly recommend it to check my Instagram where I post all those information so you guys can see specific image and what kind of settings did I use to create specific um, image. So I'm not gonna talk about it in this video. You guys can go to my social media and all those informations are there. Also, um, I'll post them into the description of this video so you guys can exactly see what kind of settings I've used for my entire setup. So now I'm gonna share with you guys some of the images which we've created using that type of uh, background. I'm gonna show you, of course, images which are not edited so you guys can really see how creative and how interesting those backgrounds um, are. And I still, if I push them a little bit throughout the retouching process, we can definitely bring some of those colors, some of those tones, some of, some of the saturation to another level to get to the level where I want the image uh, to be. But um, I just wanna share with you guys this entire concept. I hope those informations were interesting and you guys uh, like this concept I highly recommend to to try it if you guys gonna have any specific questions or you guys gonna have some challenges with that please let me know I'm gonna be happy to help you out but um, again the concept itself I think it's really interesting and very fascinating and you can really do many many interesting images using that type of backgrounds and different types of images to kind of bring something fresh and something new to your headshot. So thank you for watching, stay tuned, and I'll chat with you guys next Monday. Bye-bye.